What's going on, everyone? You're tuned in live, and it is that time. We're going to give you guys some real good information today. It's a question that we get asked very often here. What UTV should you buy? So, great question. We get it every day. Um, first off, let me start this video off by telling all you guys, if you are Team Kawasaki or Team Can-Am or Team whatever, and there's nothing better than what you own, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get, you're gonna get butt hurt by listening to the facts. Team we, Yamaha, nothing beats the YXZ. Exactly, if, uh, if it's YXZ or nothing, then I'm sorry, uh, you've got some limitations. But the facts are the facts. We drive cars every single day. We drive every car made every single day. So at least we might be able to give you our opinions. Now, whether our opinions are worth anything is another question and you guys can decide that for yourself. But what we like to do is narrow down our car discussions to two um, styles, turbo and non-turbo. Now, we don't do a lot of back uh, woods trail riding here like you would see in uh, Florida, mud. We don't have that so much out this way. So we don't do a lot of that. So understand that maybe our opinions are based around the terrain that we have, which is everything from the beach to the mountains, dunes to racing, and um, that, that general area. Um, let's start off with some of the, how about non-turbo cars right now? <coughs> so right in front of us, we're looking at a Cowie, uh, the new KRX. I would have to say the good things about this car, um, the structure, the components, um, arm mounts, double shear tabs, hardware, all of the design of the car is extremely strong. Very, um, they're very conducive to a lot of abuse for a long time and not have to touch this car. The suspension design, geometry wise, is incredible. It has a lot of negative camber gain throughout uh, travel, which you will find in the front of a trophy truck that limits track width scrub. Um, it has a lot of bonuses. We've put quite a few miles on this car already. The only, I, I think that this car, the only thing that's a negative so far, in my opinion, when it comes to function and drivability, is it's underpowered. I think that it feels like it's got less power than most of the other non-turbo cars. Um, but the good thing is, if they throw a turbo at this thing, I think that this car is going to be a massive competitor to any other car on the market, especially if they get wider, you're going to see really good things to come. Go ahead, question? Yeah, it's uh, Stevo714 said, wow, some secret Evo parts. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, thanks for noticing that, Stevo. Um, our shop cars typically, if you guys look really close whenever we get to one, you might find a lot of new parts that nobody's got because most of the awesome companies in the industry like Evo, we partner with and we, uh, we share cars for testing and new products. So on the KRX, um, great car needs more power, can't wait for a turbo on this car. Um, also normally aspirated, how about a double X? So this Textron now rebranded into something else and soon to be strictly a Robbie Gordon car. I'm not talking about Robbie's new car. I'm just gonna talk about this car right here that's already available. This one happens to have a long travel. I'm not gonna judge long travel one way or the other on this stuff, let's just talk about it stock. This is also another well-built car from a structure standpoint and from longevity state, uh, standpoint. It is along the same lines as a KRX from a structure and strength um, point of view. Hey Justin, real quick, we yep. got a couple questions here. Um, <coughs> Diversified Fab asked, did they fix the engine issue on the KRX? And Chapo Racing asked, what's the top speed on the KRX? So uh, KRX top speed, I can't tell you exactly. Chapo, um, if I remember right, it's about 78 miles an hour, somewhere around there in Mexico, I think is when we were hitting the rev limiter. Um, we have not flashed the car and brought that up yet. Um, so it's probably in that range. Definitely um, not fast enough for Justin. Umberg. No, it's kind of slow. Now, um, wait for him. Now, uh, diversified as far as the uh, engine issue on the KRX. What he is talking about is that uh, Cowie had an oil scavenging issue at one point in time. They did fix it. Um, so I don't think that that's a concern for anybody when they're looking at buying a Kawasaki, so we'll just leave that alone. 
I really like the chassis of this car. It was impressive. Mitch had this thing out at the cinders the other day, and he was absolutely pinned going up and down the hills, and this thing stays planted with whatever you could throw at it. Well, Chase is right. The suspension works really well in this car. It does work great stock, but after we've played with it, it's incredible. And you guys will see some before and after videos on the KRX coming from us soon. Back to the Wildcat. So suspension design geometry is incredible in this car. I think it's uh, probably the same as a KRX, uh, other than the rear. I like the rear geometry better in a KRX than on this car. These had some negatives uh, that they had to deal with. Um, weak transmissions, uh, they had axle issues, and front rack and pinion. Uh, most of those are cured in the car through different models of axle that they went through. They did have an upgrade to the trans. So um, I would put this car slightly below the KRX when it comes to drivability, performance, strength, um, an all around discussion of the car. It does make more power than the KRX, so it's above a KRX in that respect. Let's finish off the non-turbos and let's go talk about the Honda. We got any more questions, Mr. Boy? Uh, yes, sir. So, Army N21 KRX or Talon? Stock versus stock, drivability-wise. Okay, KRX or Talon, uh, stock for stock. There is no competition in that last question. The KRX <laughs> smokes the Honda. All day long. I agree with you on Okay, that. now, the Honda has, let's talk about the Honda and so I can make a better comparison to the KRX. Okay, good thing about the Honda. It's, w it's built very well. They uh, definitely took their time. The structure is nice. I don't think it's as strong as the KRX, um, but it's very close. The engine in trans in the Honda, in my opinion, is the best normally aspirated non-turbo engine and trans package on the market, by far. Also love the fact it has no belt. But that's pretty much where the positives end for me, in my opinion, on this Honda. The geometry of this car, front end's not too bad, the back's horrible. Um, it's got, comes stock, stock for stock, extremely stiff, possibly the stiffest, roughest car, bone stock you could possibly buy. It will kick your kidneys right out of yourself. What do we call it in Mexico there, the Honda Donkey? The, the Honda Donkey. So, this car is rough to drive, and even after working on the shock and spring package, it makes it a ton better, but it still has limitations. As soon as you get into the big stuff, the car's got bucking issues, which is strictly from geometry. There's not much you can do about it. The only way you could fix it is by hanging a ton of weight off the back of the car, like a spare tire mount all the way rearward, not in the bed, put all your weight rearward, and the center of gravity has to come rearward for the car to work good in the whoops. Um, no, otherwise, I like the function of the car. It's just completely undrivable from a pleasurable standpoint. You know, it's, it's not plush. We did have our guys at Fox kind of explain to us a little bit behind that. <coughs> they, they had to uh, do extensive testing on these shocks, correct, Justin? Yeah, the Fox guys spent a lot of time with it. As a matter of fact, uh, this car was, the development was started in 2000, late 2012. They developed this car from early 2013 to last year. That's one of the reasons why I think they fell short, because they were designing a car that was going to beat everybody in 2013. <laughs> well, it took them so long to get the car to market that uh, they got passed up. I've been there before. So, hey, you got a question, Mitch? Factory Elite Racing asks, which car will <coughs> give me the most chicks? <laughs> Let's see. I think... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go KRX with a wrap on it, and the wrap's gonna have to be a whole bunch of naked dudes, and you will get plenty of tail if you were driving that car. With that being said, I want the non-turbo favorite, Justin. From your opinion, uh, don't we have one more to talk about? Which which is YXE. Final? Oh, my yeah. favorite. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. We don't have a YXE in the shop today. You just have what we tiss, have. Tiss. So positives. Wait for him. Um, Positives on a YXE. Okay, engine and tranny package is great. You can put a ton of power to it. Um, the trans and shifting is awesome, especially in some of the automatic stuff later on. Uh, it's built pretty well. Um, that's about it. I'm gonna have to stop there. If you are going to go short course racing where suspension does not matter, because all you have to do is land a big jump and then flat turn in a corner, awesome car.
awesome car, short course car. If you are gonna go drag racing, you're gonna shove a ton of power in it and you're gonna go drag racing somewhere where there's no whoops, awesome car. But if you wanna go through the rough, you wanna go through the whoops, you really are asking too much for that car. It's, you're never gonna get the geometry to work correctly. It's not gonna go through big rough stuff real fast. Again, very similar to the Honda with respect to geometry. It has the same problems as the Honda does. So hang a ton of weight off the back of a YXE and you'll really improve a ton of its functions. All right, you're on a desert island, Justin. You only have one non-turbo car that you're stuck with for the rest of your life. Which one is it? KRX. KRX. There it boom, is. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. All right, you guys have questions before we get into turbo cars? Um, not really anything on that. I got a one about a General XP, which we actually have one here. General XP. So that is not, not you know, non-turbo. Uh, I didn't put it in the rest of the list because it's kind of more of a cruiser or utilitarian car. But I'm a really big General fan. I like them a lot. I think that they completely dominate over a uh, Ranger. Um, they dominate over most of the utility vehicles that are out there. I think it's the best one made. I'll just shorten up that whole category of utility style vehicles and just say buy a general. It's built the best, it works the best, it can ride the best. The plush factor is through the roof if you want it to be. You could throw AC in it, a heater in it, you've got room. It kind of covers everything where all the other cars fall a little bit short. We I've did, we, we missed a big one. And What's this that? probably my favorite one, the RS1. Oh no, I'm, yeah, <laughs> all right, well, okay, I might I have to revamp, of its own. I, I think it is, so when we're talking about normally aspirated stuff, I skipped the RS1, that's my fault. I love an RS1, I think that car is amazing, there's almost nothing about it that I don't like, it's not as strong as any other cars that I mentioned because you've got earlier like XP style arm mounts and ball joints and things like that, but that car is a ripper, it is connected to you when you drive it, and there's not very many other cars that can say or act like that. But it is kind of in its own little realm. Um, if you're looking for a single seater, there's only one to choose, and you're not choosing a bad one. RS1 is badass, period. Um, I would own one if all I did was drive by myself. Before we leave this subject too, you can't forget about the great gym that Ernie told us about, XP 900 four-seater. Oh. Yeah, so if you take all the category of non-turbo and you go old, what's the best old one? Then um, I think amongst the shop guys, it's always going to be an XP 900. Um, I kind of... You know, the XP 1000s. The, yeah, the I think a 1000S and a 900S. Um, honestly, I think those are pretty badass cars for trail cars but we just don't do much trail narrow stuff here, so I'm kind of staying away from that, but we've had plenty of fun on those cars too. All right, we've gotten everyone in the group now. Justin, I'm gonna make it everyone hate you at the same time, love you. Put all those cars in a list. Top favorite to least favorite. Okay, so RS1 is my favorite if you're just by yourself, so that's off to the side. There's no competition there. Um, in utility, general. Um, in sport, uh, normally aspirated. I'm gonna say KRX, double X, then I'm gonna go Honda, and then I'm gonna go YXZ. I mean, I, I'm not very <coughs> happy with you with what you just did with Yamaha there. Well, your favorite, yeah, but that's we your can favorite. we still be friends. Sorry, All right, Justin. All right. So yeah, if you guys got questions, let's do that. Otherwise, I'm going to turbos. Yep, uh, real quick. Um, El Nando Feely X3 asks, <coughs> what do you think about the new speed UTV coming out? Um, with everything Robbie's talking about, I think it'll probably be the best car on the market. Um, but let's just see if all of that stuff actually happens. It's a lot to talk about it. It's a whole different thing to actually put it in place and have it in production. Only the, time will tell. Only time will tell. Let's just find out when the car is done and we're actually testing it and go from there. But according to the list of things they're throwing at it, it'll be the best car. And then uh, one from Crash Johnny. Do you prefer the XP1000 regular or the XP1000 turbo four-seater? No doubt turbo. Um, of, of all the XPs, there's no, there's nothing you can do about the horsepower advantage of a turbo. Um, it's, I just don't see any, any place where a normal XP is better than a turbo unless you're forced to be on something narrow, slow, and quiet. So that's just not what we drive. Adrian454 Perez, when's the next giveaway? Don't worry, we got some stuff of brewing. Stay I tuned. Can't, <laughs> I can't tell you in advance, because then it wouldn't be a surprise, and we want to make sure all our giveaways are a surprise. We might give you half a day notice. We did just get all the way taken care of with our last big one, so we <clears> are got something huge in the works here. Oh, and just so you guys know, one of our last posts was uh, throw a caption next to the guys that are holding the hub in their hand at a race. 
We gave away five shirts on that one to the top five comments. So make sure you guys respond to our stuff wherever it is. We are trying yeah. to keep you guys as uh, engaged in you know getting as much out of us as possible. If I can make, if I can get uh, Chase to shut his mouth for a second, then we'll actually get a question from Mitch. Yeah. This, is, this is actually a really good one from Army N21. <clears throat> Between a Pro XP and a Maverick X3 XRC RR, which one will last longer if you leave them stock but you ride them hard? Absolutely the Polaris. So that brings me to our turbos. And I'll go into more detail with that question as we're talking about the turbo applications. So let's start off with uh, Can-Am X3s. Um, we raced that car. We've got those cars as pre-runners and toys of our own. Um, we love that car currently so there's a there's a, a pre-runner x3 right here that is also raced in some of the sonoran rally stuff by adrenaline motorsports um, and we've got our race car in the other building we've got ernie's uh, four seat max back where we started this live feed so we are x3 fans but let me ignore the fact that we like them and tell you the goods and the bads um, best suspension design on the market um, functions the best through the big stuff, the little stuff. Um, everything about it, it has everybody beat in that area. Um, engine and trans, great. It's a belt, so-so, but as far as turbo cars are concerned, that's about the only choice you have. That's always gonna be a belt right now, maybe till next year. Shh, didn't hear that from me. But um, room in the cab, the lay down seat design, you can see it's more like driving a sports car as opposed to driving a vertical seated truck like a Polaris. I wouldn't say the Polaris is drive like a truck, that's not what I mean, but as far as that cab is concerned, it's a personal preference. If you want to lean back, then you're going to love it. If you want to sit straight up, then you're not going to like it. And that same thing a lot of people hate. As for me, like when I am inside the Can-Ams and I'm at the dunes, I have such mm -hmm. a hard time seeing over the front of that vehicle. Exactly. So now back to suspension being the best, but here's the negatives with a Can-Am. They, they do not have very strong arm mounts, tabs, um, bolt hole locations aren't double sheared in a lot of places, uh, thin material on the mounting tabs. All of those things add up to a car that is, you, if you just hop in at bone stock and go out, rip it and rip it hard, a lot of things are gonna come loose. A lot of things are gonna wear out or oblong a hole. So it's not a good car for hop in and forget it. Um, it's a great car if you're mechanical and you can do some of the additions to the car that it needs. So, you know, bulkhead, uh, double shear plates, uh, some of the components that we make to try and make the car stronger. There's a, there's a long list, but if you do all those things, then a Can-Am will last without you having to touch it very much. Um, so it's my favorite from a suspension standpoint and drivability, but it's not very good when it comes to leave it alone longevity. Now, XP Pro. XP Pro, we don't have one in the shop right this second, but let's go look at some of the other turbos or a Turbo S. XP Pro, I think, gets a bad rap um, for its looks on the roll cage. Um, and maybe because of pricing, positioning for pricing in the market compared to a Turbo S and other cars. I think it's an amazing car. The suspension works great. Um, once we play with it, it's one of the best riding cars you can buy. Certainly the best riding Polaris you can buy. Um, everything about it's stronger than previous years. Um, the chassis is built much better. All the mounting points are double sheared, bigger hardware, a lot better of everything when it comes to keeping the car together. So back to your first question. Which one's better if you want to jump in at bone stock, not touch it, drive it, and not worry about it? The Pro or the Turbo S, I think, will last longer without being touched than an X3 will. Um, the Pro has great power, um, similar to the Can-Am. Um, same power, roughly, as Turbo S. Um, let's compare it. So what does it do badly, the Pro? I think it's been marketed bad, and and um, and people don't like the looks of it, but I love the car. It works great. People have so, said it's a little uh, narrow, right? Uh, they are narrow, but you're gonna you're gonna have choices in that coming uh, the next couple of months. What so, was your question? Real quick, Justin, I want to <coughs> give a shout out to Brian Thorne, Brian King, George Hamill, and Dino Met, Dino Jet. I'm sorry. Mm. Um, a quick question here too from Frosted Razor. Do those razors get run without the cover over the belt and clutches? If yes, then why? So most of the cars out this direction that you see a cover off is are there going to be a car that goes to the sand dunes? The dunes are fully loaded, floored at all times when you drive the car, belt, belts are a problem. 
So the guys will pull the cover off there. They're not going to get, it's not going to get any water, not going to get any rocks. They're just going to get some sand in there, which does wear the clutch out quicker, but at least they don't smoke belts all the time. So that's the reason why you might see covers off of cars in here because they go to the dunes. Now I would never do that in a race car. I would never do that because of rock, dirt, and water uh, will definitely be a problem. What do you mean by double shear points? So double shear, uh, let's find a good example. How about, <clears throat> here's a good example. So take a look. We're looking at the rear of the Honda right here. This radius rod is bolted through the spindle and it's only held on by this one mount on the spindle and the bolt. So that means that this bolt can flex, move back and forth because it's not held on on the outside. If there was another tab out here that was connected to the spindle and it was held on both sides of this rod end and you couldn't bend the bolt because it's inside of a tab, double tabbing or double mounting is what double shear is. You're holding it from shearing off because you're holding it in two spots. Now look up forward, just look at this shock mount, maybe from up here. <clears throat> you can see the shock mount's got a, a mounted tab on the outside of it and one on the inside of it. That is double shear, so the bolt can't fold off. Perfect. I got another uh, good one here. Would you recommend the IQS system or just Gold Edition's shocks on the X3? Um, I would do the internals and spring kit first because it's going to improve the ride quality. The IQS does not improve ride quality. It inc improves adjustability. So if you put IQS on a bone stock car, it's going to ride like a bone stock car, but you can adjust it from the dash on the fly. If you do all the internal work and the spring, then you get a better ride, then do IQS later and have a better ride quality adjustable on the dash. <clears throat> okay, so back to Polaris's. I think an XP Pro is a great car, it's underrated. Um, a Turbo S is a badass car as well. Probably has a little bit more love because of the looks. It's been around a little longer, it has great strength, double shear tabs on it, as before in previous years did not. Bigger hardware, 12 millimeter instead of 10. Um, larger bearings, larger trannies, larger clutches, everything about it's great. It does ride really, really nice. Um, a Turbo S is a much better riding car after you've played with it like we do than any of the previous XP Pros or XP Pro Turbos. XP, <clears throat> I mean, not XP Pro, but um, XP Pro and the Turbo S ride very similar once they're played with. I prefer the XP Pro myself. Um, the Turbo S, as the rear suspension droops out, it'll tow out quite a bit, which makes the Turbo S a little squirrely, especially in the whoops. The XP Pro does not do that. So I, I like the Pro better. XP yeah. Turbo, go ahead, bitch. Uh, quick question <clears throat> from one fitty King underscore B. Mm -hmm. like Ask, does your products work on Kings and or do you guys do your magic on Kings? Yes, we do. We work on Kings quite a bit. As a matter of fact, we modify a lot of Kings. So yes and yes. Um, XP Turbo, pre Turbo S. Great car, but it's older. Um, it doesn't ride as well as the S's. It doesn't have the strength as the S or a Pro. Uh, you're getting down to the bottom end of the Polaris lineup, in my opinion, when it comes to what's out there in turbos. Um, that's about it for Polaris Turbo, isn't it? Yeah, no, Justin, you're getting a lot of love <clears throat> here for uh, all the information mm. that you're giving all these guys. I think everybody uh, really appreciates it. Awesome. I love being given in. I'm going to make everyone hate them now. Mm. Line up your cars in the turbo. Okay, I think uh, that I think that if you can work on your car, the Can-Am's the best, XP Pro is second, XP Turbo third, um, I'm sorry, XP Pro is second, Turbo S is third, XP uh, Turbo is fourth. If you can't work on your car or don't wanna mess with it to make it strong enough, then I would have to put the XP Pro first and the Can-Am after that. I got a quick uh, spring question here from G-Code MFG. Shock therapy versus Eibach versus Fox spring kits. Differences, goods, and bad. So a Fox spring kit and an Eibach spring kit are going to be either one kit, here's your spring kit, go for it. It doesn't take into consideration all your accessories. Or with Eibach, you're gonna get three different spring kits, soft, medium, and hard. Again, they are not taking into consideration your accessories because if you have a heavy accessorized vehicle in the back, but it's light in the front, 
Well, guess what? With an Eibach kit, you're going to get stiff front spring rates and the correct ones for the rear. Um, when it comes to our spring kits, we modify them according to your car, your accessories, and your driving style. So whereas others might have three options, we would have 20 to 30 options. And we tailor it to your needs as opposed to you having to deal with a kit that's too stiff because that was your only option. All right, I got another question. <clears throat> Justin, if you had to choose one car for rock crawling only, what would it be? Um, that's a great question. I think that right now I would probably say a Honda Talon um, set up extremely soft, really light spring rates, um, really light valving, and let the thing crawl. Um, it has some of the nicest technology when it comes to that trans and clutch engage engagement of anything, um, and it will absolutely climb like a goat more so than some of the other cars that we've tested in the rock. As much as I want to laugh at you for that statement, yeah. it was amazing seeing that car working at King of the Hammers. Yep. They yeah. Their short course guy in there, I believe he took second overall in a Honda. Yeah, maybe so. Um, I, I think that, you know, they're hanging a spare tire off the back of that car, which helps with weight distribution and that would help it in the whoops. But um, probably one of the best rock crawling cars that we've tested. Unfortunately, it doesn't do much else fairly well. So that's why it's not on top of my list. So we're getting blown up here with a couple questions. Maybe we can right. try and blow through these real quick. Questions. Um, because it's Jeff asked, can DSC and rebound adjusters be added to the QS3 shocks from the 2020 RS, or am I better off buying new shocks from an XRS? Um, I would buy new shocks. Yes, they can be added, um, but your expense is going to be too high. By the time you do the adjuster and all the shaft mods to that and the labor, you're better off selling your set and buying a new set. Perfect. Um, Donald Woods asked, what is the warranty on our front sway bars? A uh, warranty is lifetime, so if you have any issues on a bar, just let us know and we will swap it out for a brand new one. Uh, Jeff Christopherson 9 asks, what kind of mileage would you consider changing shock oil? Um, we always recommend our rebuilds being between two and 3,000 miles. The only caveat to that is if you're racing and we would like to see the shocks every 1,000 race miles or less, if you can afford it, I'd like to see inside the shocks every race. And then uh, Albar0 underscore 90 asks, what is good to prevent from nosedive on a jump? Well, um, if, you're, if the shock and spring package is correct and not causing your bucking, then you want to be in the throttle just a little bit when you leave the jump. Honestly, I think the biggest difference between a perfect jump and a not perfect jump is jump selection. I see guys take jumps with a nasty dirt bike lip on them all the time. You're never going to do anything about that. In a UTV, it's going to be bad for you every time. That's usually the fail videos you see of guys wrecking. It's always jump choice. Pro proper selection and acceleration off the lip. Yep. You don't have to be floored off the lip, but you better have a little bit of throttle in it at the same time, and that's assuming your suspension is correct. What's, what's the number one car you would choose if you had a family or just straight doing dunes? Um, I would do an XP Pro, uh, uh, or I would do a Can M X3 Max. Uh, the Max has more room. The Pro would be less maintenance. And if you want to keep your wife happy and have a closed cab, that General, boy howdy. Yeah, it's not going to be the fastest car, certainly in the dunes, but that thing will go anywhere you want to and all your buddies uh, when you're following them up in the mountains or in the dirt. And I honestly would like to own a general with air conditioning and then a race car. I would kind of be the best of both worlds. It's pretty impressive to see those general guys keep up with everyone. It's true. Yeah. I got another one from uh, One Feet of King underscore B. I like your name, dude. One That's awesome. <laughs> mm. um, real quick, if you guys did your magic on a set of kings and a set of foxes, would you guys recommend one over the other or maybe some insight on what may be the differences? Info is much appreciated. Okay, I recommend doing the foxes. We can always make a fox work better. Uh, the re and I'm, I'm just talking about UTVs here. We're not talking trophy truck shocks or anything else. The reason is two things. One, I don't think that the design of the bypass piston in a King can actually be tuned as easily or well as some of the systems in an external bypass, Fox or an RC2. Um, also, the Kings typically do not have hard anodizing on the shock bodies and some of the other components. For instance, the piston in a King is raw aluminum, whereas, and the adjuster is as well. So whereas in a Fox, you're gonna find hard anodizing throughout every component in the whole shock, so they will last longer. I prefer the King, um, I prefer the Foxes. 
So I got a, a serious question from SoCal5150. So I, how, do I, how do I act serious? Uh, <laughs> hmm. While in Baja, do you prefer corn or flour tortillas? And which carne asada or al pastor? People want to know. <laughs> flour? And I prefer pork on a fork. Um, uh, what is that? That's uh, Adabata. Uh, Adabata. That's yeah. his favorite. Man, if I could find an Adabata that's rolling right in front of me on flour, that's my preferred. But you can't ever go wrong with carne on anything. And when you're hungry after pre running with one beer, pff, any taco is good taco. Uh, Eldon Chris82 says, I did the RS RIS kit in Glamis. He loves it. It was stock now and I have a cage and seats. Do I need to have my shocks redone? You won't have to redo the shock internals, but I would suggest that you adjust your ride heights, uh, measure the car ride height with you in it and follow our instructions for what we suggest. If it's sitting low, then adjust the ride height by adding preload, you should be fine. And then uh, one more from Frosted Razor 10 asks, if I ride mountain trails and through river crossings, is the Razor Turbo S a bad option, max speed about 45, 50 most of the time. I don't think it's a bad option. The only thing that would be bad about that car is if the trails are really narrow. So if the trails aren't narrow, I'd run my race car through there. Whatever I can get to do the best and softest and not feel any of that stuff, uh, wouldn't bother me a bit. So Turbo S, yes, unless it's really narrow. Hold on, you guys. We got somebody requesting to come in live with us. Oh, and he disconnected. Ah, chicken. <laughs> Uh, all right, first guy to go live gets a t-shirt. Oh. All right, first, oh. first live question. What's your question there, Mitch? Uh, Dino Jet mass, Matt asks 64 inch for 72. Uh, on the player stuff? Uh, either that or maybe both. Overall, three, okay. Or, yeah. All right, so um, I think that the original 64 inch stuff with turbo um, did, did drive like it was narrow and you could roll the car pretty easy. Um, get into a Turbo S, it's a lot more stable but I'm gonna give you one um, reason why that's not 100% true, XP Pro. The XP Pro does not drive like it's a narrow car and it is next to impossible to roll that thing. So I think it's car dependent on that. All right, we got our first live viewer, Dune Syndicate. We're waiting for him. Justin, I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to you. <clears throat> All right, where you at, buddy? There he is. I got a view of your forehead. Hey, nice glasses. Hey, thank you, sir. Hey, you got a question for us? Yeah, I want to know on the, uh, the IQS, uh, does that basically take the adjusters when you're in the medium, put them right in the middle, and then when you go to hard, does it take the high speed and the low speed all the way max, and then when you go soft, does it do the, the opposite? That's exactly right. So uh, the IQS set all the way soft would be the same as having both of your high and low speed compression adjusters all the way soft. When you have the IQS set for the middle position, that would be like having two full turns in both. And having it in the hard position is exactly the same as turning both of your compression adjusters all the way stiff. One thing is different though, the IQS system flows 10% more oil than the factory compression system does, which means all the way in the soft position is softer than your DSC adjuster is. And all the way in the stiff position is stiffer. But yes, to answer your, answer your question, it's the same as doing those adjustments like you just mentioned. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Hey, cool, man. We'll get you a t-shirt, so make sure you, uh, you know, private message us your, your uh, color of choice and size. DM us your shirt size and your address, brother. We'll get that out to you today. I appreciate it. Have Thanks a good one, dude. Guys. All right, well, we're coming upon our margin here. Buddy. Yeah, well, let's quit this video unless you guys can come up with some really cool questions. I Hopefully I didn't piss everybody off with my opinions on cars. I got, uh, I got two more questions here. I think we can end it on that. One is a pretty good one. Um, Jets Duner, Jet Set Duner is, uh, what's your favorite front end gusset kit for the X3? I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna narrow down to one. I think you should probably go with a TMW, an S3, or a Geyser. Uh, I think that Sean's making one, right? Yeah, yeah. If they not, are. then okay. Then those would be my three top choices see there. A lot of TMW in here. Yeah, a lot of TMW comes to the shop, and a lot of guys like that. We have that kit on our on Ernie's Max. Yep. Perfect. And then uh, JJ Crods asks, when are you guys restocking on the aluminum radius rods for the Can Am X3? They're coming in this week. So by Friday, if they're not on the site, then they'll be on the site on Monday. Perfect. All right, you guys, good. Let's cut it off. Thanks for turning in, tuning in. Thanks for grabbing all the questions. We love answering those. 
You know what we haven't got from you guys? Suggestions for more topics. So if you guys want to, throw that out and we'll cover that the rest of this week. Thanks for tuning in. If you guys have any questions on any of our products, go to our website, shocktherapist.com, or give us a call at the shop at 623-217-4959. Thanks for watching.